it's been a disaster. If you've been paying attention to what's happening at the U.S. southern border, um, the U.S. Border Patrol says it will now temporarily suspend the use of agents on horseback <laughs> to round up Haitian immigrants after... And I love that they only do this after these images go viral. Did you catch these images yesterday, Philip? I mean, did you see these things? Like I, a, a bits of it. Uh, I was I actually had a really busy day yesterday, so I w I didn't catch most of it. I wasn't. Well, good for you that you didn't have to see this stuff. But these guys, you know, riding around on horseback, uh, you know, smacking people in the head with these with uh, the reins of their horse, the reins of their horse, uh, you know, these leather reins that you use to to you know. To, to go around. So they're sm sm smacking people with these things and slashing them and uh, trying to drive them out of this area. And this is, the, you know, f because it gets on the news, you know, because then it shows up on the news, then that's, of course, why they stopped doing it. So now they're, they're not going to be using horses to go over and, and, and you know, slash these, uh, these immigrants um, after the, the public found these images so outrageous, some agents have been put on leave as a result of it. And it's like, you know, you can see them on their faces too. And they're all, you know, these guys in power like this, they're all zipping around and they're so, they're like, they get in like this boys club where they're super happy. Like, Hey, I'm up on a horse. This, this is a lot of fun. I just get to whip these people. Just disgusting. White House press. I'm, I'm honestly surprised he's not up there on that horseback spray, like pepper spraying that dude right in the face. Yeah. No, it's more fun for them to just like get the lassos out and slash people. You know, but you could still you could still hit people with your with your reins after you pepper sprayed them. I mean, mm -hmm. I just it's just unbelievable that that I'm joking and it you wouldn't know it, right, <laughs> right. But this this crisis is out of control as uh, thousands of Haitian refugees coming from uh, Central and South America uh, and. You know, not a lot of them actually coming from Haiti. A lot of them had already moved years ago away from Haiti, uh, trying to find some semblance of a better life from a country that has absolutely collapsed. You know, you've got uh, after a 7.2 earthquake levels the country after Colombian uh, trained American trained Colombian assassinators kill the president of the country. You know, trained by U.S. trained by the U.S. <laughs> We have no culpability of it. By the way, four months ago, the we 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 declared that Haiti was like on a special list, like where you just do not send people. What changed in four months? I got an answer for you. Nothing. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters that the Biden administration has taken very specific actions, very specific, as it relates to those horrific photos and these videos here. You can see them here. Uh, you know, these are the images showing the agents whipping those up to round up refugees who have escaped Haiti because of the total collapse of their government. Many have been flown back. Look at this. Like he's like, I'm going to chase after you chase after you got my, I got my whips. Here we go. Uh, many have been you know, sent back. Many are calling for that to stop too, but the administration has not commented on that part of it. Like you're going to send people back to assist a broken, like a government that doesn't exist. <laughs> you're sending people back. Well, is the answer then just to, to, to keep them here in the United States? I'm not saying that at all. What I said yesterday, of course, is that we need to put resources and funds so that these, this judicial backlog doesn't sit there for months and months and months or years before any sort of legal process can unfold. We can spend billions of dollars. I don't know if you saw the story today where we're literally funding a billion dollars for Israel to build an iron dome to shore up their Iron Dome missile defense program. We're sending, we just approved a billion dollars for Israel's missile defense system. We are paying for that. We are paying for that. And yet we can't spend any money on judges and a, a process at the border to make sure that we can process and properly get people where they need to go, back home or uh, legal, legal entrance under visa programs, et cetera. It's a total crap show. Um, and apparently, you know, now in the White House, we've got there's people crying and leaving and, and quitting. We have a special designation uh, designee for the uh, for the Haitian uh, government um, quit yesterday um, as a result, um, saying that they're ready to leave. Um, don't want to be a part of this anymore, that it's an absolute disaster um, to work in this in this government. 
this is a really a make or break moment for the Biden administration. Um, and you have, you know, you have all of these people saying, I, this is not the, this is not the government that I signed up to work for. The people that signed up to be a part of the Biden administration when he declared that he would be a more humane president for immigration. And yet he's literally using the exact same law, the Title 42 law that the Trump administration created under health violations to kick people out of the country with rapid pace, throwing them on airplanes and getting them out of here. Which Kamala Harris has specifically said is un unconstitutional and that she would have absolutely no part of it. And now she's a part of it. And Biden has done two times as many deportations as Trump. But nothing fundamentally changes. Um, you know, so this hypocrisy, so these people who are working for the Biden administration in the White House saying, I, you know, I, I didn't sign up for this. You're, we're supposed to be open arms. We're supposed to help people. And I'm not saying you like let everyone in. Like we, we are a nation of laws, right? <laughs> Through a process. Like, can we have a process that doesn't take three years and then people sit in cages for three years? And now the talk, of course, of opening up Guantanamo Bay so that these people can have a place to live temporarily. We're going to take them to Cuba in a, in a, in a military facility. Where the media is not allowed to go, by the way. Didn't, didn't, right. isn't, that, isn't that what Australia is doing or what had been doing with their sort of like uh, refugee uh -huh. island? Yeah, get them as far away. You know, that's the thing at the end of the day, like these administrations, they just don't like you, the fact that you can see it with cameras, right? Like if there's cameras, that's the problem. Once the cameras are there, then, then it becomes a problem. And, you know, that's why we, we weren't hearing much about this until we started seeing images like this, you know, thousands of people in tent cities underneath overpasses and crossing the border like this few porta potties, people being whipped. Like this is happening. You know, we all try to like live in our like cloistered environments until like it shows up on your back door. Like 100 degree temperatures, children sleeping on dusty dusty ground in a pandemic no less. You know, and f almost none of the Haitians are vaccinated. They don't have any infrastructure to to disperse vaccinations. You know, I mean, I, I see a lot of people in the, in the, in the comments kind of like, like kind of talking about like, we can't afford to take these people in. Actually, we can, we absolutely 100% can. If you look at like our military budget, all of these things where we we're putting all of this money so that just a few people make, you know, get all of this from it. There's, there's not a problem of resources here. It's that we just don't want to. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of marshalling those resources. Like, you mean to tell me we can't help a few thousand Haitian refugees? This is our solution. We can employ this guy to whip the guy in the head. Like, we're paying him to do that. Imagine if we actually had a system that could help process and take care of people. I mean, the amount of food we throw away. Just you, you take any major city, like even a medium-sized city in the United States, the food that just gets thrown away, perfectly good food that gets thrown away, would be more than enough to feed all the people coming here. But but it is. It's it's we don't we don't want to do that. That's not our system. We we don't help people. We our system is just funnel money up. It's all that that you know trickle down mm -hmm. economics. Put all the money at the top. Everything we can. And, and you think about yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's a great point. And you think about. These poor people who, you know, are, and I, I'm saying they're coming here just because they have, their government has collapsed. They have nothing, right? So the argument is, well, they're going to come here and take our jobs, right? I love that argument. No, sorry, doesn't happen. Ask any large business owner, especially in California, that relies on the H-1B2 visas all, all, or H-1B visas and all that, right, for, for work. These jobs are not wanted by Americans, they, they simply are not, to, to, to count grapes, to pick strawberries in fields in California summer heat, doesn't, Americans don't do those jobs. And businesses rely on that, on that labor force. 
and seasonality and those seasonal employees to come from Honduras and other areas year after year after year. Um, and so imagine all of those companies right now that could benefit from having labor. Think about how all of these jobs are still not being filled, right? I mean, low wage labor. Think about that. You don't mean to tell me that some of these businesses would not love to have like Haitian immigrants that are able to work uh, for their businesses where we have all these Americans that are saying, I'm tired of being paid seven twenty five an hour. I mean, they have nothing at this point. They might be able to make $15 an hour, $12 an hour, which was far better than they were doing in Haiti. But on top of that, forget just like the labor shortage in the United States and or the, you know, the pay shortage in the United States and all these, these people down there. We spend billions of dollars wasting, bombing other countries. Like I just mentioned, we're spending a billion dollars making sure that the Israelis have an Iron Dome missile defense system. So we can send a billion dollars to them to make sure they can shoot missiles out of the sky. But yet we can't put some more money towards judges and a judicial process to get these people processed properly. And maybe they can get a temporary visa, temporary working visa to stay in the United States, get out of this horrific uh, environment that they've come from, pay taxes, get a job. Yes, they're an immigrant. They're here on a visa, on a working visa, et cetera put some more money towards judicial process, we absolutely can afford that instead of spending $750 billion a year. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's just no money in it. There's no money in it for these, for, you know, for government. There's not really a political will because it just looks bad on camera. And so they run away from it. But, you know, that, that whole Iron Dome thing really chaps my ass, I got to say. Yeah. So we covered that in the newsletter this morning. And you know, you mean to t I spoke to my Israeli friends, uh, some of which who worked in the government in Israel, in, in Israeli worked for Benjamin Netanyahu, like very high up in the government. And I said, you know, how are things going there? And he said, um, he said, it's, oh, it's fine. He's like, you know, we had, uh, of course, the missiles that were, you know, back over the past few months where they had the attacks and so forth. He's like, man, our iron domes, you know, just works flawlessly. He's like, we go through like a period at night where it's like, you know, you hear the sirens and you see the missiles and we're out on our balconies watching these, the iron dome missiles are shooting these things down and boom, boom, boom. And, and it works flawlessly. He's like, and then the next morning, he's like, I know this is crazy. He's like, but like, like the next morning we go to the cafes and we have normal day and we don't even think about it, you know? And he's like, for other countries, that would be like life changing. You know, can you imagine in America if like, ba boom, ba boom, and then like we'd be talking about it for years, be like nine eleven, you know? And he's like, yeah, we just go back to our normal because the Iron Dome. He goes, it's so good. That was like four months ago. So now that we're spending a billion dollars to do what with the Iron Dome to make it even better? Okay, so let's let the American taxpayers foot the bill for this stuff in other countries. So we can shore up and make sure that you guys have all the weapons you need. We don't have money to help people. Give me a break. Well, the thing is, like, so you see, you see this argument a lot. The whole, like, like we should be taking care of America first. So, like, like a thought experiment would be, like, let's say we did. We closed the borders off 100%. Brought all the troops home. We're just 100% working on America. Is there anything we've seen from Wall Street, from, from corporations, that top 1%, or our government that makes us think any of them want a utopian America? That any of them would be like, okay, now we've closed everything off. Let's bring the bottom up. No. There's nothing that I've ever seen that makes me think that's what they would want to do. It would still be the exact same thing. Our homelessness problem would still be there. Even if we were taking America first, that's not what that means to them. It's not the, you know, the rising tide rise, brings up all ships. They don't want well, it, that it it's also a joke, this idea that just because you physically close the borders and you pretend that we are an island, we are not. Our economies are incredibly interconnected with the rest of the world. So yes, you want to close the border down. That's fine. That's one thing. But then that means that you want to bring, like, forget any international investment, forget trade. <laughs> like, let's close everything off then, right? Let's, let's stop lending money to China. Let's stop borrowing money from China. Let's stop giving money to Israel. Let's stop borrowing money from Israel. Like, all of it. Just all of it. Let's just literally pretend like no other country exists. How long do you think will last? So you can't Not like pick long. and choose, you know, you can't like pick and choose what you decide to close down. So you can close down the border physically, but our financial system is inextricably linked to the rest of the world. <clears throat> so that's not going to change. 
Um, yeah, shut it down not, and then shut it down and live without coffee. <laughs> you know, that right there would yeah. bring America to its knees. No, 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 no sugar, you know, no coffee, uh, no bananas, no imports of any kind, no more cheap televisions, no more cheap computers, right? Rare Imagine. earth metals. <laughs> yeah. know, like... Think about all of the things that you were like, no more uh, blood diamonds for your, your, you know, your women, you know, to get your, uh, to get your, uh, you know, your diamond, diamond rings or whatever, you know, all of that stuff, all of it gone. It's just not going to happen. So, you know, anyway, but, uh, you know, that we continue like this. I mean, this is a real problem for the Biden administration right now. And, you know, you just don't see the thing is, you're not going to see like a lot of coverage of this on the mainstream media. You're starting to see more and more of it. Um, but even if you like go to CNN, you're not going to see much coverage of this, like literally at CNN.com right now. I mean, there's almost no coverage of what's going on at the border. <laughs> CNN, the Biden, the Biden channel, you know, look at this, nothing. Gre Greta Thunberg, China or uh, climate change in, in Berlin. Good. Almost no, no coverage. But they do have uh, she got a, a cosmetic lawsuit here for $50 million. Like that's an important story. Chris Pratt is going to play uh, Mario in the new Super Mario Brothers movie. You know, and and why you should put down a hot dog and reach for a handful of peanuts instead. But no coverage of the border. No coverage of the border. What's going on there? So this is, you know, uh, the Biden administration has a, an absolute catastrophe on its hand right, hands right now. And uh, we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Let me know in the comments what you think what should happen down there. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.